Shalom, brothers and sisters in Christ. The Lord be with you. What a great joy we can gather on site and online on this first day of the week and also the first day of the year, one year closer to the coming of our Lord. You know, in Psalm 136, the psalmist look back at the history of Israel and look to Almighty God and give thanks to Him. So I thought on this first day of the year, we can respond similarly. So earlier, uh, now when I say give thanks to the Lord for His good, I'd like to invite you to respond for His steadfast love endures forever. Shall we do that? Let us stand. Church, give thanks to the Lord for He is good. Let's try it one more time. For His steadfast love endures forever. Okay. Church, give thanks to the Lord for He is good. Amen. Please remain standing. <laughs> Blessed New Year, brothers and sisters in Christ, for those in the sanctuary and also those online. Let us pray the collect of priority together in one voice, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, The Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than this. Together, God have mercy upon us and write this, all these laws in our hearts. Holy Scripture remind us that God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins to be our advocate in heaven and bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sin in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandment and to live and love and peace with all men. You may sit or kneel if you are able. Let us spend this precious moment to come before the Lord and allow the Holy Spirit to search us from within. Church, let us pray the prayer of confession together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our fellow men in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate thoughts. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. We believe and trust in a merciful God. Receive God's forgiveness. Almighty God, who forgives all truly repent and mercy, upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in your goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As a forgiven people, let us stand to praise God. Morning church, let us begin this new year singing praises to our Lord and Saviour. <coughs>
sun and the trumpets call so lift your voice it's a year of jubilee and out of zion's hill salvation comes oh he comes riding on the clouds shining like the sun and the trumpets call
after the day is gone and the things of earth have passed everlasting
usher you into our lives even as we usher in this new year, this new week we ask Lord that you come come be with us in our helplessness in our weakness in our pain in our grief, we ask you to come be our friend be our father Church, let us pray the collect together. Almighty God, who wonderfully created us in your own image, and yet more wonderfully restored us through your Son, Jesus Christ, grant that as he came to share in our humanity, so we share the life of his divinity, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Church, as we continue to keep this prayerful posture, let us enter into a moment of intercession. Father, you promise us through your Son that when we ask in faith, you 
we will receive. When we seek, we will find. And when we knock, doors will be opened for your will and purpose. Oh gracious Lord, today we want to pray for the delivery of Laos, for the Dean, Reverend Yen Hatfield, and the team that Lord you have called them to serve in Laos. May you continue to equip every servant of yours serving in the ministry. We pray for open doors. We pray for like-minded disciples that will disciple more disciples. Lord, may you be known through word, way of life, works and wonders. We also wanted to pray for St. James's Church. We want to carry our hearts of thanksgiving for all that you have done for 2022. Lord, we pray that you will fill us with the knowledge of your will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. Lord, we pray this so that we can live a life worthy of yours, pleasing you in every way, bearing fruits in every good work. May we resolve to follow you closely in 2023. May your children of this place we could all call home. Lord, we pray for those who suffer loss and bereavement at the recent Genting Highlands landslide and the winter storm in the US. Lord, in your mercy, may you grant speedy re relief and minister your supernatural peace to every one of them. May you bring your comfort personally to those who have suffered and in grief. May all these moments be pointed to you that we would know that in you we will have peace. In this world, we will have tribulation. But Lord, we take heart because Lord, you have overcome the world. Here in Singapore, we pray for the continued advancement of the gospel. We pray for building up of your church in this nation. Lord, we pray that you bring revival accompanied by a zeal to serve the underprivileged. This moment, we want to pray for ourselves, our loved ones, our friends, people around us. We want to leave all these names to you who are hurt in their body, mind and spirit. Let us pause for a moment as the Lord bring all these names into your heart so that we could present them in His heavenly throne of grace. Father, you heard all the names that is lifted up to you. Your scripture reminds us that though our health may fail our spirit may be weak but Lord you are our strength and you are our portion forever in the most precious name of Jesus Christ we pray Amen What a wonderful joy we gather in God's presence on this first day of the new year. I believe the Spirit of God had ministered to our hearts through the well-chosen songs that were sung today. Indeed, God is the good God, faithful God, loving God, our refuge, our strength, our hope. Warm welcome, brothers and sisters in Christ, all those on site, 
and also online. Especially those online, we miss you. You may be not here because you are unwell or because you are overseas. Especially those who are studying or working overseas, we miss you. We hope you'll come back soon. But here, those on site, we want to welcome those who are here for the first or second time. Before the service, I met a few, and I believe there may be a few others. If you're here for the first time or second time, could you just raise your hand for a while? We would like to come to you with a small welcome pack. Friends, or you already received, you may want to say hello. I know there are two friends in the middle. Hi, <laughs> two ladies. Anyone else? Or even those at the auditorium. Welcome. Welcome. I have three notices for us uh, today. The first concerns Chinese New Year cookies. You know, it's quite funny, right? Christmas 25th, Christmas decoration. Next morning, you wake up, you go to the uh, walkway, it's suddenly changed to Chinese New Year deco overnight. <laughs> well, Chinese New Year around the corner, and I believe some of us may have gifts to give to our friends. And what more to support a meaningful ministry of the hiding place. Hiding place is a drug halfway house whom God has used for all these past almost 40 years to minister to men and young, uh, young adults men if, uh, in the recovery from drug addiction, gambling, and so forth. I had the privilege to serve at hiding place for eight years from 98 to 05. And I could see the power of God to change life only by the power of the Holy Spirit. So when you come into the church earlier, you will receive a uh, flyer. You may have not, maybe you just raise your hand. Host, could you just help to distribute it? That they are very nice, wonderful uh, cookies that they will be handmade. The best, most popular, the lagi, the best is the pineapple tart. Very, very nice. Once you start one, you cannot stop. So buy a few bottles. <laughs> so church, the order form is with you. As the Lord enables you, do support this uh, uh, ministry for the Lord. Second, parenting course, uh, parenting of uh, teenagers. You know, a child psychologist was once interviewed about his, his views about raising children. At that time, he was not married. He had no children. He had five wonderful theories about raising children. Then years later, after being married and having five children, after being interviewed, he said his five theories cannot work anymore. <laughs> Parenting is a tough journey, especially when our children go through teenage life. So church, families, if you're young teenagers that you're looking after, God has entrusted and gifted to you, do consider attending this course. It starts on 5th of February, for five Sunday afternoons. More details will be sent via our church uh, WhatsApp. Final announcement, but not the least, is the introduction of Reverend Hambali Leonardi. <laughs> Pastor Ali? Some of you would have uh, received the introduction through the WhatsApp, and he himself has said his name sounds Italian. <laughs> but he's not. <laughs> so in a while, I'll give him a few words, uh, time, a few, mini uh, few minutes, uh, a few seconds to speak. Uh, that we are so joyful. Indeed, Pastor Hali is with us. Almost 20 years ago, we have served together at St. Andrew's uh, Cathedral. So Pastor Hali, a few moments for uh, you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor John. Well, uh, you, as you know, my name is Hambali, but uh, do call me Hali. Yes, uh, I have a very strange name, but I used to hate my name because when I was young, they would tease my name. Hamburger, uh, Lemon Bali, or Ham from Bali. But recently, uh, a few years ago, my mother explained to me, Hambali means Hamba. Hamba in Bahasa is servant. So Hamba Tuhan. So now I start to appreciate uh, my name. So again, I would like to thank you for welcoming you. Give me me your big smiles, especially I like the poster in your live. It says, welcome home, and I really feel so at home as well. So I'm looking forward to serving together with all of you. Thank you. Um, church, which is just join uh, our hearts together, we pray for Pastor Harley. Yeah, thank you, Lord, for bringing your servant into our midst. Thank you, Lord, for the way you have raised him to know you, to love you, and to serve you. Thank you, Father. 
we ask, Lord, that indeed he will be used by you wonderfully, Lord, to be your blessing as your servant, Lord, to our church community here at St. James. Thank you for all the spiritual gifts you have endowed him with, for all the person that he is, Lord, you use it wonderfully for the work of your eternal kingdom. Help him to adjust. Thank you, Father. And we ask, dear Lord, that through him, many, many lives will be blessed and ministered. Thank you, God. Father, we also pause to pray for our dear brother and pastor, Pastor Glenn. Thank you, Lord. And on his first day at CCR today, we ask your blessing upon him for Eliza and their children. Lord, you too, as you have used him so well here, use him wonderfully, Lord, at CCR for your kingdom. Thank you, Lord, that through him, many lives will be blessed and touched as well. Thank you for him. Lord, you have gifted him and his family to our church community all these years. We thank you for him and his ministry. Lord, we also pause to pray for all our children and young people returning to school this week, especially for those who are going to a new school, a new school environment. We pray for each child, each young person. Lord, that you grant them every wisdom in their studies, grant them the joy of growing up. Most of all, Lord, the joy of knowing Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And now, Lord, even as we prepare to return you your tithe and our free offerings, Lord, we pray you use it for the work of your eternal kingdom. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. <coughs> Church, let us rise for the offering song. Today's scripture reading is taken from Philippians chapter 3, verses 7 to 14. Philippians chapter 3, 
verses 7 to 14. But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him. Not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible, I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Invite us to stand for the Gospel reading. The Holy Gospel is written in the sixth chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, reading from verse 9. Glory to Christ our Saviour. Matthew 6, 9 to 13. Pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Please be seated. Happy New Year to those here on site and also online. Yeah. Let's pray, shall we? Good, good Father, thank you even as we transit into 2023, that you and your presence is leading us. Help us, even as we have taken this first step in this service this morning, direct our path and to walk in the path of righteousness all the days of our life. Through your grace, and in your mercy, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, Nicky Gumbel will say that on the 1st of January in his gym, they will bring in all the you know, additional equipment because the gym will be so packed. But within a week, they will start to remove all this additional equipment because statistically, apparently, 90% don't survive their New Year's resolution, especially to exercise and lose weight. I know that for myself. <laughs> and most don't survive beyond three months. You know, today we come not to make New Year resolutions, but as Christians, later we want to come, we want to renew our covenant with God. Why? Because like what we have read in Philippians, you know, like Paul, we want to press on, we want to finish this race of faith, just like what we see our Lord Jesus did when he walked the earth. But in verse 12, that's where we see that Paul was very honest, very humble, you know, very much like our brother Pastor Harley, you know, in that humility, he humbled himself. He wants to serve us. He admit 
that he has not yet reached the finish line of this race of faith. What more for us? I know. I know I'm still a works in progress. And truth is, on this side of heaven, we will never be perfected until we see Jesus. So like a determined athlete, Paul will then press on to reach that finish line because a prize awaits him. And in this race, Paul knew he is on it because Christ has already made him his own. Christ is calling him upwards to himself. So as we start, you know, the question is, have you made Christ your own? We just passed Christmas last week and Jesus came on that very first Christmas at a great cost to himself. We may fail to realize he had left all his heavenly glory. He took on human flesh. That's what Philippians 2 tells us. And he came with a mission. How he will serve us is that he will go to the cross. He will pay the penalty of our sins. So that in his death and then his resurrection and when he ascended to his Father in heaven, he overcame the penalty of our sin, which is death, which is rightly all of ours. And then in his victory, he offers us his grace, his forgiveness, something that we do not earn, something we do not deserve. And perhaps some of us seated here, if you have not started this race with Jesus Christ, you need to receive this gift of his grace and then begin this race. You know, all of us, when we were born, we didn't decide that, oh, I will be born this day to this family. But the Apostle John will say to us, to all who did receive him, receive Jesus, who believe in his name, God gives them the right to become children of God. Born not of blood, not born of the will of our flesh, born of the will of God. So if you're not uh, yet a Christian, I want to urge you, receive Christ. And then start this race to explore, to know him and his surpassing worth, which Paul himself said. Because your life is valuable. How do we know that? Compare that to Jesus' decision that he was willing to leave everything, trade all his heavenly glories just to make us his own. And like the team for this year, when we went through Christmas, this is the greatest gift anyone can give to you and God is offering it to us. Receive it and then run this race, complete it. Because when you finish that race, that prize that God has prepared for all who finish well will be ours. And with that, Paul will then do some very radical things because he is focusing now on Jesus Christ as he runs this race. The first thing Paul will tell us is that, you know, don't look back because everyone who is in a race know that you don't look back because the goal is in front. Every runner wants to breast that tape, win the prize. And that's why Paul is saying to us, even as we begin 2023, forget the past. Forget even the good things, the positive things, and also the negative ones. Now for Paul, he was actually someone with a considerable reputation, heritage. He had righteousness from keeping the Mosaic law as a Pharisee, but he will see all his accomplishments as rubbish. And that word really is manure. Something when it's compared to the righteousness that God is offering to all of us. Something that, that righteousness that comes from faith as we trust in Jesus Christ. The righteousness from God that depends on this faith. And that's why it's important for us not only to, to receive Christ, but in 
Christ, let's continue to run this race. Yes, we are saved by trusting Him and His work on the cross on our behalf. And Paul, knowing this, he will say, whatever he has accomplished in his earthly life, in his religious life, he counts them as rubbish. He knows that he will never be able to obey God perfectly despite having kept the religious laws as a Pharisee. And this is the very reason why we understand that on the first Christmas, Jesus came. And every Christmas is a reminder for us, isn't it? We are unable to save ourselves. We are powerless unless God does His work in us. But it's not only at Christmas. It's not only for today. On the start of the first day of a new year, every day, every year, let's make it an opportunity now to lean upon this righteousness that we can have in Jesus Christ. We don't depend on what we have achieved in the past. You know, there's a story about a woman who will come, you know, to a prayer meeting. And each week, she will earnestly confess her past sins in the prayer meeting. And she will humbly request for prayers. And she will ask God, God, will you clear all the cobwebs of my life and praise God isn't it for that humility but the problem is that each week she will come and she will repeat the same sharing and the request and one day after hearing this usual expression of contrition the pastor stood up and prayed God don't just clear the cobwebs just kill the spider You know, some of us are visiting the past. Paul had a past too. In his zealousness to protect the Mosaic law, he will go and persecute Christians until God met him on the road to Damascus. And he realized the great sins that he has committed against the Lord. And that's why later in his letter to young Timothy, he will tell him, I am the chief of sinners. Yet Paul will know Christ died to atone for all our sins, even his most heinous sin to persecute the Christians. We need to let go of our past too. Because if that is holding you back, know that you cannot change the past. In fact, God can't change the past. But God can change the future if you were to trust Him. The prophet Isaiah said, though your sins be they as red as scarlet, the blood of Christ can wash it white as snow. So with the help of God, even as we begin 2023, let's not look back. Let us look forward instead of what is about to come. Because the price is ahead, and that's what Paul is asking us to focus on. And that focus is really in verse 10 and 11. And he says that I, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. And I may share his suffering, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible I may attain the resurrection from the dead. The desire of uh, Paul was really this, in the present, as he lives, is to know Jesus Christ and to possess this new strength, resurrection power, a power that raised Jesus from the dead. And that's what I want to. How do we receive this power? I pray that this power will also guide and direct SJC even as we begin 2023. You know, when I had the opportunity to go on my long leave in September, I was greatly challenged by this little book by Dara Johnson, 57 Words That Changed the World. It's a journey through the Lord's Prayer that we've read. Because prayer 
And praying the Lord's Prayer will change the world. It will change you and I. Prayer, after all, is the only thing that is recorded for us in the Gospels that the disciples asked Jesus to teach them. And that must be significant. The Lord's Prayer is something so sim simple, isn't it? Familiar. Later, as part of our Holy Communion liturgy, we will be praying that. But we often don't stop to reflect and we will miss out wonderful truths embedded in it. Because Johnson sees that this prayer, the Lord's Prayer, can... Okay. All right. There's really a chiasm of six petitions, but at the very centre of it, the words in red is these words, on earth as it is in heaven. We realise that this really is God's unchanging plan, His desire, right from the start in Genesis all the way to Revelation. This particular phrase, it will modify the six petitions and that's what will change this world, that's what will, what will change us and the disciples. So we can pray like this, God, hello, that is to make your own name holy on earth as it is in heaven. God, let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, let your will be done on earth here as it is in heaven. God, give us today our daily bread on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us our sins, Lord, even as we forgive others on earth as it is in heaven. God, lead us not into temptation, deliver us from the evil one on earth as it is in heaven. Because when we pray this, in the here and now, in the present, we invite heaven to invade into our situation. And this is Christ's attitude for us. His, when he walked on this earth, his only desire is that the glory of heaven, the glory of his Father will be seen on earth. And it is Paul's desire too. He, like, he desires to be like Jesus. And may it be ours too as we learn to meditate on the Lord's Prayer and pray it in 2023. Because when we pray the Lord's Prayer, it's really this, we want the fullness of salvation. It is really asking that God, your perfect rule that's already in heaven, now rule over the perfected people of God, the disciples, us, the church, both now, past, and in future to come, that it will be ruling in your perfect place, and that is heaven to come. To see this reality come to this earth now, the new Jerusalem that we are praying for to come, to see heaven established, starting with me, in my heart, in my life, in this church, in Singapore, in the turbulent world that we, were, we are experiencing right now. So over the next six weeks, we will look into the various aspects of these petitions. You know, God's holiness, God's kingdom, God's will, God's providence for rest, God's forgiveness, God's deliverance as we think about the Lord's Prayer. You know, the prayer, the Lord's Prayer, and prayer in itself is so transformative, so powerful. Sometimes we don't realize it in Revelation chapter 4 that we have just gone through. We learn that, you no know, heaven, the worship in heaven has continued day and night. It didn't cease right from the day of creation. You see the picture of the four living creatures crying out in the presence of God, Holy, Holy, Holy. It's the Lord God Almighty until we come to the breaking of the seals by our Lord Jesus, the ascended Christ. And then when he broke the final seal, the seventh seal, this worship that has never ceased stopped 
for 30 minutes. Silence. And I like to just quote what Daryl Johnson wrote in his book. And he said, I quote, In John's vision, an angel who had a golden censer came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense to offer with the prayers of God's people on the golden altar before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, together with the prayers of God's people, went up before God from the angel's hand. That's from Revelation 8, 3 and 4. And then all kinds of things begin to happen on the earth. Unquote. I like to say, let us realize that our prayers matter because God has chosen to work the salvation of this world through our prayers as he has unveiled this mystery of how this world, the history, our salvation will look like. So like what Daryl Johnson would say, those who pray becomes truly the movers, the shakers of history. So stunning, isn't it? So stunning that even the heavenly worship that didn't stop from the day of creation, it stopped when the angels mixed the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints. Church, I'd like to urge us, even as we begin this new year, pray. Pray in your own time, daily, and will you also prioritize prayer by coming and join us, especially with the people of God? It's not only our prayers. The people of God as we gather each month in the upper room. Because we want to be part of this history-making impact. Let us not underestimate this. But not only this, the order of the petitions is so important. Daryl points us to the fact that there are, there, the, the, there are two halves. The first really is talking about the agenda of God. You see that in the pronouns that is being used in the prayer Jesus taught us. Lord, hallow your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. And then it is followed by our needs us give us this day our daily bread our physical our relational needs as we learn to forgive and be forgiven and also our spiritual needs our protection from the evil one don't you realize this will parallel later what jesus himself will teach in matthew chapter 6 verse 33 Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek first God's agenda and then our own needs will be taken care of by God. Because the reverse is not true. If we seek all our own needs, God's agenda will be forsaken. But the most surprising thing for me, even as the book unveils, is to see the verbs, especially in the, the uh, first five petitions. Daryl pointed out that in the Greek, these are imperatives. Imperatives are commands. They are not requests. And we all know we don't order your superior, your boss around, much less God Almighty, isn't it? So why is Jesus asking us to, to pray in this way? He's not asking us to order God around because you cannot. But we can pray boldly. We pray these petitions because not only are they imperatives, they are also in the Greek, what we call the passive mood. What is we are telling God in our prayers is really this. We are acknowledging this. God, you are the only one who can do all these things that we are asking to be done in our prayers. It is not us. You can't make God holiness you can't bring his kingdom here you can't fulfill his will unless the lord builds the house we will labor in vain 
But God, you can do it. Do it, Lord. Let it be done. We are not ordering you to do it. Make your name holy. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth here, starting with me, even as it is already so in heaven. God, only you possess this power. And the surprising mystery, as we pray a prayer like this, God hears, God honours, God uses us as his channel to do all these things. And that's why the Apostle Paul will say, uh, John will say, later in, in, in the first epistle to, in, of John, chapter 5, and this is the confidence, the confidence that we have towards God if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the request that we have asked of Him. And that's why the great philosopher and scientist Blaise Pascal will say prayer really is about the dignity of causality. What it means is this, when we pray, God grants us, He, he gives us this unspeakable privilege. We partner with Him to fulfill His purposes on earth, in this world, as it is already decided in heaven. So as we start 2023, make this prayer that Paul has, that he sees in Jesus Christ, knowing Him, knowing this power of his resurrection, working in his life and our life. Let's avail ourselves to that, that God will change us, change this world. And Paul will press on. He will press on not only to know this Christ, but to also to lay hold of the price that is before before him as he runs this race because as he is changed to be like him he will then gain this price what's this word press this word press actually has a unusual and surprising meaning it's actually the same word when we have the english word to persecute and in verse 12, Paul will say, I will press on to make it my own, even as Christ Jesus has made me his own. Jesus made us his own. On the cross, he opened his hands to the world. I've done it all. I've borne the penalty of your sins. Receive it. Open our lives also to him. Because our Lord Jesus loves us so, so much. That's why He came. That's why He lived and showed us what love is. He died. He rose again. And not only that, He's not distant. Today, even right now, He's praying for each and every one of us. Run this race. Run this race till we return to Him. And Jesus is praying that he, we will also live with this same intensity to love God as he did. This is what motivated him even as he looked and we are told in the Gospels that the joy that is set before him of us, each and every one of us, becoming like him. He set his face, his joy and went to the cross willingly. So may we learn to press on because Jesus is pressing his love into us, even as he made us his own. There's a missionary to the new Hebrides in the South Pacific Islands uh, in the 1800s, 19th century. His name is John Patton. And John wanted to go there, but 20 years earlier, you know, some missionaries had also gone and they were they were killed they were eaten by the cannibals so this friend an older friend would persuade him john don't go you will be eaten by the cannibals and Peyton will say mr dixon you are already advanced in years 
Your own prospects is to be in a grave that will, and you will, there you'll be eaten by worms. I confess to you that if I can live and die serving, honouring the Lord Jesus, it makes no difference whether I am eaten by cannibals or by worms. And Paul showed that same intense focus. He would say, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. And even if his life is poured forth like a drink offering so that the faith of the Philippians can be perfected, he is glad. And he asked them to rejoice with him. You know, John Payton will go on, he will translate the Bible because the Word of God is the power to transform us. But when he came to this word faith, he was struggling. How do I translate it into the language? And then he will hear a, a villager crying out for help and say, come, please come. I need to lean heavily upon you. And he realized, I found the word. Faith is to lean into Christ totally, completely, heavily. Because it is in this leaning in Christ, it will result in a kind of life that is different. It's a response to the grace that Christ has poured into us by His coming, in His death, in His resurrection, and His daily prayer for us. It is Christ who upholds us. It is He who empowers us. It is He who presses the love of God into our hearts more and more each day. You know, as we start uh, this year in 2023, with all the many transitions, and that's the word that I get even as we were waiting on the Lord, especially with COVID, you know, let us imitate uh, the Apostle Paul. Let us let go of the past. Let, whether it is our victories, whether it is our failures. Let us stop allowing what has been our burdens, whether it is sickness too, let it not hold us back from the future that is ahead of us. Because as we pray to our Father in heaven, know that He is able, He delights to lead us forward. Let us know, let's capture his heart, let us set for ourselves spiritual goals that He will deposit in us as we wait upon Him. Be it to read the Bible, be it to, to, to break some sinful habit that you've been struggling with, or perhaps to witness to a loved one. Or perhaps some of us are struggling even to obey in getting baptised and be a, a part of this community, whether to be confirmed to most Importantly, just be in a thriving community, in a small group, so that you can continue to be growing as a disciple. May we learn to press on, but leaning totally on Jesus Christ, because He has prepared a crown for glory when we see Him. So may we press on to love and serve the Lord. I'd like to invite us right now to just stand and we will sing a song of response before we come to the table after this. A symbol of the grace that God wants to shower into our life. And we pray, take my life and let it be. Lord, consecrated unto thee. Take my moments, every moment, take my days. Let them flow in endless praise. So may we continue to press on to love and serve the Lord as Charlotte leads us.
Church, I invite us to sit as we prepare our hearts. Please have a seat. As we prepare our hearts for this solemn moment of covenant renewal. A reminder that this time of covenant renewal, we are making a vow to God to promise Him that we will be faithful, committed, dedicated disciples of Jesus to press on, to love Him, and to serve Him. So just take a few moments to prepare our hearts before we begin.
We begin the covenant renewal with a time of confession for those who are able. You may like to kneel where you are. God of mercy, hear us as we confess our sins. For the sin that has caused the poverty of our worship, the formality and selfishness of our personal and corporate press, our neglect of fellowship and the means of grace, and our hesitating weakness for Christ. Lord, have mercy. For the sin that has made us slow to learn from Christ, reluctant to follow Him, afraid to bear the cross and be disciples, misusing your gifts and evading our responsibilities, and failing to be good stewards of your creation. Lord, have mercy. For the sin that has made us unwilling to overcome evil with good, tolerant of injustice, quick to condemn rather than encouraged, and selfish in sharing your love with others. Lord, have mercy. I invite us to stand now for the renewal of the vows that we had given at our baptism. Church, do you turn to Christ? Do you repent of all your sins? Do you re renounce the devil and all his works, the empty show and glory of the world, with all the covetous desires of it, and the carnal desires of the flesh? so that you will not follow nor be led by them. I renounce them all. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Therefore, to all who truly repent, this is His gracious word. Your sins are forgiven. Church, do you believe in trusting God the Father who made the world? Do you believe in trusting God the Son, Jesus Christ, and trust in Him? Do you believe and trust in His Holy Spirit, the giver of life? This is the faith of our church. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we have been saved by God to do good works and to be His faithful ministers of grace. In St. James Church, we have diverse ministries that serve to build up the body of Christ and reach others with the gospel in word and action. We exercise this privilege to minister by grace and look to God for His empowerment. Brothers and sisters in Christ, let us again accept our place within this covenant which God has made with us and with all who are called to be Christ's disciples. This means that by the help of the Holy Spirit, we accept God's purpose for us and the call to love and serve God in all our life and work. Christ has many services to be done. Some are easy, others are difficult. Some bring honor, others bring reproach. Some are suitable to our natural inclinations and material interests, others contrary to both. In some, we may please Christ and please ourselves. 
in others. We cannot please Christ except by denying ourselves. Yet the power to do all these things is given to us in Christ who strengthens us. Therefore, today, let us make this covenant of God our own. Let us give ourselves to Him, trusting in His promises and relying on His grace. Church, together, I am no longer my own, but yours. Your will, not mine, be done in all things, wherever you may place me, in all that I do, and in all I may endure. When there is work for me, and where there is none. When I am troubled, and when I am at peace, your will be done. When I am valued, and when I am disregarded. When I find fulfillment, and when it is lacking. When I have all things, and when I have nothing. I willingly offer all I have, and am to serve you as and where you choose. Glorious Blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are mine and I am yours. May it be so forever. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. May the Lord grant us His grace to honor these vows we made before Him today. Church, we are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we are all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Share God's peace with one another. With us online. And if you are new, please say hi on the chat. And if you would like someone to pray with you, please click the request button prayer button and our team will be happy to connect with you and with the easing of the pandemic guidelines i would also like to invite all of you come and join us in person from next weekend at any one of our three services saturday 5 p.m sundays 9 a.m and 11 30 a.m and we will celebrate holy communion on the first and the third weekends of each month so no pre-registration is now required and it would be great to be able to worship in person, fellowship, and especially have breakfast together after the Sunday 9 a.m. service. And we hope to see all of you soon. So please come. Now let us receive God's blessings as we draw this service to an end. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.